In this video, I'm going to be comparing the Tesla Model Y to four other similarly priced electric SUVs, and we are going to cover the following seven categories to determine just how the Tesla Model Y compares to the latest electric compact SUV competition. We're gonna talk about battery technology, range and efficiency, the cost per mile of range, cargo room, charging speed, safety, and also the warranty. So without further ado, let's dive into the details. While the Tesla Model Y is selling extremely well worldwide, it is especially doing well in California. According to this Inside EVs article, for the full year of 2021, the Tesla Model Y was the second best selling vehicle in California, just behind the popular and less expensive Toyota Camry. Notice that on this list, besides the Tesla Model 3, there are no other electric vehicles on the list. What's even more impressive is Tesla is still supply constrained and they were able to sell more vehicles in California. For instance, the Model Y outsold even the RAV Four, which is an incredibly popular SUV. And with Gigafactory Texas about to officially open and start producing the Tesla Model Y 2.0, I expect that it's very likely and very possible that the Tesla Model Y could become the best selling vehicle, not electric vehicle, but vehicle overall in California for 2022. With that being said, let's dive into the seven categories of comparison that I mentioned at the beginning of the video and compare the Tesla Model Y to the VW ID4, the Ford Mustang Mach-E, the Kia EV6, and also the Hyundai Ioniq 5. The first category for comparison that I wanna look at comes down to the battery technology built into each one of these electric SUVs. Unlike the other four electric SUVs on our list that are powered by pouch battery cells, the current version of the Tesla Model Y sold in North America is equipped with cylindrical battery cells. When it comes to a direct comparison between cylindrical cells and pouch battery cells, there are some disadvantages and advantages to each form factor, but overall, when it comes to electric vehicles, it sure seems like the cylindrical battery cells are superior. One of the reasons why I believe pouch battery cells are so popular with electric vehicle manufacturers comes down to the packing efficiency of these cells. According to the Battery University website, quote, the pouch cell makes the most efficient use of space and achieves 90 to 95% packing efficiency, the highest among battery packs. However, some of that packing efficiency is lost due to the fact that pouch battery cells don't have a lot of structure and they need structural components built into the battery packs to support them. For instance, Battery University goes on to say, quote, eliminating the metal enclosure talking about with the pouch cells reduces weight, but the cell needs support and allowance to expand in the battery compartment. Interestingly enough, although cylindrical battery cells, as Battery University goes on to say, have less than ideal packing density, due to some engineering magic and increasing the energy density of the battery cells themselves and the chemistry, Tesla has been able to build the 2022 Tesla Model Y battery pack in such a way that it's more energy dense than the pouch cell competition. Notice that according to data from official EPA documents, with the 2022 Tesla Model Y battery pack using cylindrical cells, Tesla was able to achieve a pack level energy density of around 180 watt hours per kilogram, beating the competition. And once again, remember this is with 2170 battery cells. I fully expect, as I talked about a lot in past videos, that once Tesla rolls out the 4680s officially in the Tesla Model Y 2.0, that the energy density will be even greater than the 2170 cells, and this will make the watt hours per kilogram at the pack level even greater. In addition, when it comes to some other comparisons between pouch cells and cylindrical battery cells, as Battery University makes clear in their comparison, cylindrical batteries have a better mechanical stability over pouch battery cells, and this is due to the fact that cylindrical cells have a hard metal casing versus the laminated bag enclosure that make up the outside of pouch battery cells. Battery University describes pouch cells in the following way. A pouch cell uses laminated architecture in a bag. It is light and cost effective, but exposure to humidity and high temperature can shorten life. In addition, they mentioned that cylindrical cells are more suited to automated manufacturing, which of course allows them to be produced at a lower cost. 
Also, cylindrical battery cells allow for added safety features over pouch battery cells. In addition, when it comes to the battery life between a pouch cell and a cylindrical cell, although a lot of that depends on the battery chemistry, if you compare an apples to apples comparison with the same chemistry, a pouch cell versus a cylindrical cell, in general, a cylindrical cell appears like it will last longer over pouch battery cells. One of the bigger reasons why the cylindrical cells generally last longer than pouch cells comes down to, once again, the mechanical stability that we mentioned earlier. The cylindrical cells are less prone to damage. And additionally, when it comes to the battery packs themselves, a pouch cell is much larger than a cylindrical cell, so it takes way less pouch cells to make up a battery pack. And while this sounds good on the manufacturing end, when it comes to the actual use of a battery pack, when some cells die in that battery pack, if you only have, for instance, around 380 some battery cells like make up the Hyundai Ionic 5 battery pack, if three or four or five of those batteries go bad, those battery cells go bad, that represents a much higher percentage than say, for instance, a Model Y with 2170 battery cells that has over 4,400 battery cells. If a few of those battery cells go bad, that represents a much lower percentage loss of uh, battery capacity. So the bottom line is when it comes to an electric vehicle, I personally prefer cylindrical battery cells like found in Tesla's, Rivian's, and Lucid's as compared to the pouch battery cells found in many other electric vehicles. I would still purchase a vehicle with pouch cells like the Hyundai Ionic 5, but I would prefer they put cylindrical battery cells in that vehicle. So when it comes to battery technology, it seems clear that Tesla gets the win in that category. The next comparison that I like to make comes down to the range and efficiency of these electric SUVs. Here's a chart that I've taken from the 2022 Cleaner Watt Electric SUV Buyer's Guide. And as you can see, when it comes to the ranking, besides the more expensive Tesla Model X, the Tesla Model Y is the leader when it comes to EPA range. When it comes to the efficiency of these electric vehicles or how many miles that each of these SUVs can travel per kilowatt hour of battery capacity, as you can see on this chart, the Tesla Model Y is the clear leader when it comes to how many miles per kilowatt hour that it can travel as compared to these other four great electric SUVs. So when it comes to range and efficiency, once again, Tesla gets the win. The next category that I wanna talk about is cost per mile of range. This is a category that I haven't talked about for a while, but simply what it is, is you take the cost of the vehicle, the base MSRP, and you divide that by the range of that electric vehicle to determine a little bit of how much value you're getting from that electric vehicle. Because of course, the range of an electric vehicle is a very important factor with the usability of that vehicle. So in this chart, I've pulled data for the longest range versions of each one of these vehicles for the following trim levels. And as you can see with Tesla's recent price increases, the Tesla Model Y is actually the most expensive per mile of range that you get with a vehicle. However, it is important to note that while I believe this cost per mile of range calculation is important and it shows how much of a value the Hyundai Ionic 5 really is, and it's actually a vehicle I wouldn't mind purchasing, when it comes down to an apples to apples comparison, the Tesla Model Y has a lot of exclusive and technology advantages over these other electric SUVs, which in many ways justifies the extra costs per mile of range. I'll let you decide, and I'm not going to dive into all the features compared to these vehicles because Tesla has a lot of exclusive features and Hyundai and Kia also have several cool exclusive features as well. I've done some direct comparisons between the Tesla Model Y and some of those other electric SUVs. If you're curious, you can watch those videos on my channel, but just on a general level, when it comes to overall value, the Hyundai Ionic 5 actually gets the win in this category. The next category of comparison that I wanna talk about comes down to cargo room, the cargo room of each one of these electric SUVs. Here's a chart that I've pulled from the 2022 electric SUV buyer's guide that you can purchase right now at cleanerwatt.com. And as you can see, when it comes to cargo space, the Tesla Model Y is very high in the list with the five seat version having a total cargo room of around 76.2 cubic feet. As you can see, that's quite a bit more cargo room than the Mustang Mach-E, the VW ID4, the Hyundai Ioniq 5, and also the Kia EV6. So when it comes to cargo room between these electric SUVs, the Tesla Model Y clearly gets the win. The next important category that I'd like to compare comes down to the charging speed of these electric SUVs. Once again, here's a chart that I've pulled from the 2022 Electric SUV Buyer's Guide. 
when it comes to the approximate amount of time that it takes to charge each one of these electric SUVs from a 10% to 80% state of charge and how many miles are being added of range per minute of charging, you can see that the Kia EV6 and the Hyundai Ioniq 5 are actually on the top of the list with the Tesla Model Y coming in third. You can also see how the charging time for the VW ID4 and the Mustang Mach-E compares to the rest of the competition. Now it is important to note that when it comes to the charging speeds that we've mentioned here for the Kia EV6 and the Hyundai Ioniq 5, those charging speeds are calculated when connected to a 300 plus kilowatt charger. It's also important to note that right now, at least in the United States, there are some European countries where the Tesla supercharger network is opening up to other electric uh, vehicles. But right now in the United States, the supercharger network for, from Tesla is still exclusive to Tesla's vehicles. So although these vehicles may charge slightly quicker when it comes to charger availability and convenience, Tesla still has a large advantage here. Nevertheless, when it comes to charging speed, we gave Kia the win in this category because it has slightly more range than the Hyundai Ioniq 5, which results in more miles being added per minute of charging. The next category that I wanna look at comes down to the safety between these electric SUVs. Now, unfortunately, it's hard to have a complete apples to apples comparison between each one of these electric SUVs because they have not all been tested by the same agencies. For instance, when it comes to the NHTSA, the NHTSA has tested the Tesla Model Y and the VW ID4, but not yet the Mustang Mach-E, the Hyundai Ioniq 5, nor the Kia EV6. The NHTSA did give the Tesla Model Y a five-star overall rating and also five stars in each one of their categories. And while the VW ID4 did also receive a five-star overall rating, it only achieved four stars when it comes to the front passenger side rating and the rollover star rating. The IIHS has tested the Tesla Model Y, the VW ID4, and the Mustang Mach-E, but not yet the Hyundai Ioniq 5, nor the Kia EV6. The IIHS gave the Tesla Model Y and the VW ID4 the top safety pick plus, and the Mustang Mach-E the top safety pick. When it comes to the Euro NCAP, they have tested the VW ID4, the Mustang Mach-E, and the Hyundai Ioniq 5, but not the Kia EV6, nor the Tesla Model Y. And when it comes to their four categories, adult occupant, child occupant, vulnerable road users, and safety assist, you can see that in the first three categories, the VW ID4 scored the highest. However, in that last category, which is the safety assist category, the Hyundai Ioniq had the highest score. When it comes to a winner in the safety category, I'm not yet going to award a point until we actually have an apples to apples comparison when one of these organizations has tested all five of these electric SUVs and I can actually compare data side by side. The last comparison that I wanna make between these electric SUVs comes down to the warranty that each of these manufacturers give with the vehicle. The Tesla Model Y has the longest mileage allowance for the battery and powertrain. However, the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Kia EV6 give an extra two years in the battery and powertrain warranty, which is really important as well. The Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Kia EV6 also have one year extra and 10,000 miles extra when it comes to the comprehensive warranty, which is of course also really important. So when it comes to awarding a point to the electric SUV that has the best warranty, although it's not clear cut, I did go ahead and give the warranty win to the Hyundai Ionic 5 and the Kia EV6 because of the extra two years in the battery and powertrain warranty and also the extra year and 10,000 miles in the comprehensive warranty. I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below about the ratings that I've done and maybe some categories that I didn't mention that you would like me to mention in future videos. And it is interesting that when I used to do these comparisons in the past, the Model Y would win every category, but now the competition is getting better and Tesla doesn't win in each one of these categories. However, overall, when you look at the big picture, I still say that the Tesla Model Y, when it comes to its category, a compact SUV in that basic $60,000 price range or less, I believe the Tesla Model Y is clearly the best electric SUV and it's very easy to see why it's selling so well. Also note that this data is for the current version of the Tesla Model Y. Once the Model Y 2.0 comes out in the near future, that vehicle with 4680 batteries will likely charge faster, be lighter, and also has the potential for greater range over the current version. And this will make this competition change quite a bit and the Model Y could have once again a clean sweep of the competition. 
I would like to remind you, if you are in the market for an electric SUV, I do have an electric SUV buyer's guide, the 2022 electric SUV buyer's guide that you can purchase right now in a digital magazine format over at CleanerWatt. Dot com. You can purchase that copy, instantly download it and flip through it. It has a lot of great information for a number of electric SUVs that are available in 2022 and also a preview of the electric SUVs that are coming in 2023 and 2024. You can find out more and purchase a copy at CleanerWatt. Com. Well, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. I'd like to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.